Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Danganronpa 2. Goodbye, despair. In the last episode, the students were... They were kind of talking in circles a little bit in the last one. There was a lot of discussion over whether Ibuki could have been the true killer. If she perhaps killed Hiyoko and then killed herself out of guilt. It seems that the students have forgotten that Ibuki had a despair disease that basically meant she couldn't think for herself. It seemed like she had lost the ability to act independently. So the only way that situation would have worked out was if someone had told Ibuki, hey, you need to kill Hiyoko and then you need to hang yourself. Ibuki couldn't have done that off her own back. And as we know, Monokuma wants the person who masterminded the crime, not the accomplice who went along with whatever the mastermind said. So even if that situation was real, Ibuki still wouldn't be the killer. And to be honest, I, I don't think Ibuki had any hand in Hiyoko's death. I, I still think that Hiyoko just walked in on something she shouldn't have seen. I think Mikan was killing Ibuki and she was like, oh shit, Hiyoko's here, and her plan went a little awry. I I don't think Ibuki had any hand in her or Hiyoko's death. Either way, the students have decided to focus on alibis next. Then our plan is to destroy the weakest alibi. Since Hajime has seen the video, it is clear what time the crime took place. It isn't though, because the video was fake. Uh, but just to be sure, that surveillance camera doesn't have a record function, right? It's a cheap-ass surveillance camera, you know? There's no way it'd have some kind of sweet recording feature. You don't need to record something for it to be fake. Then, the video Hajime saw was actually live? Mikan just... I, 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 it has to be her. It has to be. Just pushing the students down the wrong path. What time did Hajime see that video? I saw it at the hospital, right before Monokuma's morning announcement. And I saw the body at the music venue a little after Monokuma's announcement. Hmm. So Ibuki hanged herself right before Monokuma's announcement. And since we established that Hyoko was killed before Ibuki... That means the time that the murders occurred was before and during the announcement. Then we just have to find the person who doesn't have an alibi during that time? I'd like to point out, Mikan, that you don't have an alibi for that time because you and Hajime weren't in the same room. Now then, I shall issue my decree. Let Operation Destroy the Weakest Alibi commence. Oh, Sonia, I love you. I love you. <laughs> okay, make your argument. Okay, um... It'd either be Mikan or Fiyu Hiko's account. We can exclude the sick people like me and Akane, right? And what about the others? Right before the morning announcement, I was totally sleeping in my motel room. Okay. I think everyone at the motel was doing that. So everyone who stayed at the motel doesn't have an alibi. What about you guys? I was where I was supposed to be, my own cottage. That's not an alibi. Aside from those afflicted by the disease, if nobody has an alibi then... Operation Destroy the Weakest Alibi has failed! Okay, if I can't remember what Fuhiko's account was off the top of my head, but I think I I think we need Mikan's account. Because I, I do remember her her whole thing was like, oh, I met you at this time, and then I did this, and then I met Fuhiko at this time. Like she was she was the person outright trying to form alibis, from what I remember. The murders supposedly happened before and during the morning announcement. The person who doesn't have an alibi for that time... 
We can exclude the sick people like me and Akane, right? And what yeah. about the others? Right before the morning announcement, I was totally sleeping in my motel room. We have no way of disproving that. I think everyone at the motel yeah, is I, doing that. I think it has to be me. So everyone and, who um, stayed at the motel doesn't have an alibi. Nobody. What about you guys? I was where I was supposed to be, my own we cottage. Can't prove any of this. That's not an alibi. Aside from those afflicted by the disease, if nobody has an alibi, no, that's wrong. Hold on. Not all of us are missing an alibi. Except you are, because you weren't in the same room. You couldn't see her. In fact, Mikan and I both have alibis. Except you don't. You, you two have alibis? Up until I saw that hanging video, Mikan and I were actually together for a while. We even woke up together that morning. Again, let's just throw that in so that everyone focuses on how scandalous that is instead of actually thinking about it. Hey, what kind of situation is that? A sexual harassment situation. <laughs> I accidentally fell asleep on top of Hajime. I, I swear to God, Chiaki, if you... If, if, if you say anything, Chiaki, I'm going to be very disappointed. Too much info. I will take that. I will take that. That isn't a, oh, Hajime, why are you such a perv? That's just like a, I don't even know what I'm listening to here. I'll take that. Yeah, it's not like that. She just came to tell me Nagato's condition had improved. And we went to the hospital together afterward. So we were together until right before the announcement. I get it. You guys have alibis. They don't. I'm gonna keep saying that. If that's the case, the killer must be someone else. Except it's not. It's better if we think about it like that. The killer decided to falsify the murder sequence to hide the actual time of the crime anyway. So it's inevitable that an alibi for both before and during the morning announcement would be very important. Hmm. It feels like Operation Destroy the Weakest Alibi has backed us into a corner instead. But committing an imitation murder, is that really all it was? Huh? Faking the time the crime occurred by falsifying the murder sequence, hiding their alibi in the process. Was that the only reason the killer made both bodies imitate the movie? I'm, I still don't think the movie had anything to do with it. I, I think that the Hyoko death was purely accidental. Hyoko was never meant to die in that music venue. It was Ibuki, and Hyoko just happened to stumble upon it. And I, 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 think, it, it, I think that Imitation Murders is a red herring. I don't think Mikan had any thought about like, oh, I can imitate the movie. I... I think she was just like, I need to hide the body. Where can I hide the body? I'll just tie it to this pillar. Are you saying there was another reason? I feel really bad for confusing you guys so much, but that's how I feel. I think the killer had a completely different reason for falsifying the murder sequence. The killer had a different reason? Hmm. If that's the case... Are we still in the killer's trap? Yeah, you absolutely are. Inside a trap set by one of us. If so, then whose? And what kind of trap is it? A very devious one, I'll give her that. Okay, suspended. Hiya! Why, hello there, Monami! The moss balls sure look tasty today! Stop it! Stop it! Don't characterize me as someone who lives off moss balls! And here's some chance time! Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's that? Now then, Monami's appeal 
Appeal time starts now! Huh? Appeal time? Your kind-hearted big brother is gonna give you the chance to reclaim your honor! Good luck! Show those jerks who treat you like a red-headed stepchild who's boss! That's 99% your fault! While you were whining, your time's already running out, so please, make your appeal simple. About 30,000 words or so. That's too long! It'll just be a boring appeal! Come on, if your appeal is successful, there might be merchandise opportunities heading your way! Um, then... I'm Usami! Magical Miracle Girl Usami! I'm an itty bitty girl who's sweet like milk. I still hate that line. <laughs> Jeez, and I thought a certain robot's little sister was supposed to be the best. What a disappointment. Um. Um, who are you talking about? I have no clue whatsoever. Neither do I, girl. Neither do I. If it's an anime or manga reference, I'm not gonna get it. I don't watch either of those. Well, the mangas would be read, but whatever. I, I'm not into that. Um, yeah, we'll save. Why not? Boop. Resume. I'm Monami. Once again, I've been put in such an unreasonable situation. I like that. I like how it's always you saw me. Who op who re reintroduces the cases and it's almost like she's writing a diary or something. <laughs> and she's like, once again, I've been put in such an unreasonable situation. I I like that. I'm sorry. Seriously, he's like the king of unreasonableness. Why did it turn out like this? We were supposed to have a fun, friendly school trip, but it turned out all bloody instead. No. This definitely cannot be allowed. That's why I want you to remember this. Everyone, do your very best. Don't lose to yourself. And don't forget to save frequently. Oh, don't worry, girl. I do. I do that, chicken. Hmm. The reason the killer did an imitation murder is a reason other than falsifying the murder sequence. Does something like that even exist? Huh. It suddenly got quiet in here. Did I confuse you? If so, I wish I could die from self-loathing. Man, this again. If that's the case, it would have been just dandy if they had gone ahead and killed me too. If that happened, the imitation would have been perfect. So why didn't they do that? Well, it's against the rules to kill three people in the first place. But it wasn't at the time. That was added afterwards. That rule is too harsh. I couldn't get killed because of that. Seriously, just shut up already. Shut up forever. I, he's doing what you said. But I'm thinking about it again, and he's totally right. It feels incomplete. Because they didn't kill three people like the movie did? That's only because of Monokuma's rule. Which was added after the crime took place. They could have done so before. It's not just that. Come on, try to remember the content of the movie. About the lion that got killed second. That's the one Hiyoko's body was imitating, right? Hmm... Even though we're calling it an imitation, the lion was actually pinned by arrows, right? Exactly! There's... The only similarity is that the bodies were both suspended. That's it! That's literally it! The lion was killed by multiple blows that then pinned him to the tree, Hiyoko was killed by a slash to the neck, and then duct tape. Those are two very different methods of death. Shh. 
But Hiyoko's body was suspended by common household duct tape. Maybe they just used a common substitute because it was too difficult to imitate the arrows. I'm... I am certain you would be able to get arrows somewhere. Probably in the supermarket. I mean, hell, they've got that whole... That whole military section where they've got, like, guns and camouflage and all that shit. I am certain that somewhere you could find bows and arrows if you really wanted to imitate. Oh, hell, you, you might not even need to use arrows. Go to the kitchen, grab a shit ton of skewers. Those are vaguely arrow-shaped. Like, if, if you were trying to imitate the film, you could absolutely do that. Either, either by finding a workaround or as, as close to an arrow as you can get. Like, Hiyoko had nothing to do with the film. This killing had nothing to do with the film. Well, that's probably it, but that attitude is what makes this feel incomplete. If falsifying the murder sequence was the killer's plan from the very beginning, they should have taken steps to properly imitate it. But if we never realized it was a half-assed imitation, their entire plan would have been completely useless. What are you trying to say? Are you saying the imitation wasn't planned? Exactly. I'm saying, Hyoko's murder wasn't. What? Hyoko's murder wasn't planned? Um, I understand the imitation wasn't enough, but... Aren't you making a bunch of assumptions? Mikan really has been so much more present during this trial, shall we say. In others, Mikan very rarely jumped in. But here, like, oh, aren't you making a bunch of assumptions? Blah, 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 blah. I, oh, I'm gonna, like, oh, I was with Fuhiko and I begged him in a variety of ways. I woke up with Haji, mate, like... Nikon, you're making yourself look suspicious, girl. It's not just the poor imitation. There are also other strange details. Strange details? Like what? Like, for example, why did Hiyoko go to the music venue? Why did Hiyoko go to the music venue? So, you're saying the truth behind Hiyoko's murder is hidden? I have no freaking clue what you're trying to say! However, this is getting quite interesting. My four dark devas of destruction are getting riled up. You know, how is the one on his scarf just sitting there? Like, obviously, there's one on his hand, one on his fingers, one on his shoulder. But how is that one defying gravity by sleeping on his scarf? I am... I am concerned... I'm concerned that they, I, that they might actually be... Four Dark Davis of Destruction, I'm... Mm. Why Hiyoko went to the music venue? If that's the key to all this... I need to find that out, no matter the cost. Okay, make your argument, I'd assume we need Sonya's account. Oh! Okay, um... Why did Hyoko- At least this relates to Hyoko. Go to the um, music venue? Let's see, what have There's we got? There's no way we need to know that! Maybe the killer summoned her. No, she wouldn't have gone. If that's not it. Maybe she got abducted by the killer. No signs of any abduction. No, maybe. She went of her own free will. I agree with that. Just as Sonia said, she went to the music venue of her own free will. And we can use Sonia's account of what she saw in Hyoko's room to back that up. Mm. So, exactly as I assumed. If no one called for her, then why did she go? Because she couldn't tie her kimono. Hyoko locked herself in her room because she was being overly cautious of the despair disease, you know? I don't think a person like that would leave their room just because someone called for them. There's no way she got abducted? Hyoko locked the room she was staying in before she went out. If she was forcibly taken from her room, there's no way she would have had time to lock it. The killer could have locked her door, right? Just to hide the fact Hyoko got abducted. 
Then they couldn't have hidden her room key that deep in her kimono. They would have put it somewhere more obvious. Otherwise, there's no point in messing with the crime scene if nobody finds the key. At the time, you were the one who actually took out the key, right? Then something like that... I won't lose! Oh! Are you saying my gut was wrong? This could be my first and last highlight of the day. Why won't you just let me shine already? Because if you're going down the wrong path, you could get us killed, Akane. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I want you to have your time to shine, but I'm not risking my life. Th no, th that's not the issue. Shut up! Enough with your fancy talk. I'll shut you up right now. Okay. Oh, we want Sony's account. Hiyoko was locked inside her room, right? She definitely got abducted or something. The killer forced their way into Hiyoko's room and forcibly abducted her. The girl is so small and weak looking. And that's why the killer targeted her. I mean, it's a good theory, but it's but not Hiyoko's right. Hiyoko's room was locked. The key was deep inside her kimono, remember? It's more likely that Hiyoko locked the door herself. The killer was the one who locked the door. So what if the key was in her kimono? Maybe the killer just put it there later. There's no reason for the killer to put the key in Hyoko's kimono. The killer probably didn't realize she even had the key. Hold on. Try remembering Hyoko's her kimono was all messed up. Yeah. There's only one reason her kimono would be that messed up. She fought the killer. Oh, no. Allow me to cut through those words! I think I'm getting better with them. The reason Hyoko's kimono was messed up was because she wasn't able to properly wear it. Wear her kimono? Yeah, it's also the reason why she decided to go out on her own. Hyoko seemed to be really struggling with wearing her kimono. I believe that was one of the reasons she locked herself in her room. That is why I informed her. I told her that there was a full-length mirror at the music venue, and I suggested that she use it. Then, the reason her kimono was messed up wasn't because she fought the killer. Yeah, she went to the venue on her own just to fix her messed up kimono. I, I get it. I lost. Boil me, burn me, take off my clothes, do whatever you want to me! No, no, you must stay fully clothed, madam, please. Hajime, now's your chance. Make her admit defeat. Or better yet, make her do a little something something. Can someone please kick this man in the dick? Thank you. Hell no! Then, the killer probably couldn't have assumed that Hiyoko would go to the music venue. Though that may not apply to Sonya, since she provided Hiyoko with that information. Though I knew she would go there, there is no way I could have predicted when she would arrive. Don't go doubting this Sonya, you cretin! I'll put you and your hamsters six feet under! Excuse you! No! Kick this man in the dick again! He cannot threaten the hamsters! <laughs> Kazuichi, it seems you have quite the fashion sense. Do you want me to incinerate your clothes? Perhaps I could do that while you're wearing them! Oh, t turn the sexist behavior around on him. Okay. That is not the... Not the route I would have assumed Gundam would take, but fuck it. Gundam, please stop. For his sake. Oh, Sonya. Oh, I love that. Please don't do it. He's so weak and inferior to you. Oh, Sonya. Huh? What do you mean, for my sake? Cause you're a bitch. Of course. I've already overlooked no less than ten opportunities to kill you. Oh, Gundam, you Giga Chad, I love you. Even if the killer couldn't predict it, why did Hyoko get killed in the music venue? Cause she saw something she shouldn't have. The only thing I can think of is, it was an unfortunate coincidence. Co coincidence? Mm-hmm. When she went to the venue by herself, she was probably just unlucky and walked in on the crime scene. Hello, I'll take that. Thank you. She was killed so there wouldn't be any loose ends? Exactly. 
It probably happened when the killer was preparing to kill Ibuki. The killer most likely had already placed the hemp bag over her head. And without hesitation, killed Hiyoko. Because the killer used that coincidence for their crime, it made this case even trickier. That's the reason they imitated the movie to falsify the murder sequence. Which means that lowdown scoundrel didn't plan on committing imitation murders at first. Then what was the killer actually planning to do? They've been cunning this far. There's no way they'd kill Ibuki without a plan. Do you have any ideas? Are you panicking? Are you panicking because you're stuttering something fierce? Damn, we don't know the most important part. The killer's plan from the beginning. I'm pretty sure we're very, very close. Hey, Nagito, any ideas? Hey, how long are you going to stay quiet? You told him to shut up forever. Oh, am I allowed to speak? <laughs> I'm so happy I'm getting goosebumps. Everyone actually needs help from scum like me. I just love the voice actor from Scum Like Me! <laughs> that was beautiful. So what do you think? I was thinking about it while I had my mouth shut. But now I'm finally able to come to a conclusion. Ibuki definitely didn't commit suicide. Yep. Yeah, Cause she... Here's the thing that... No matter whether she went up the ladder of her own free will, she didn't have the mental capacity capacity excuse me to commit suicide she did not make the the conscious decision i am going to take my own life if she walked up the stairs of her own free will her only thought was i am doing what i am told like she she couldn't have committed suicide because she didn't have the mental capacity to make that decision i hope i make sense there huh what are you talking about? I thought there might be a possibility that she faked her death and tampered with the crime scene. But now I remember. There was blood on Ibuki's slippers. What do you mean you remember? We spoke about that. So if she faked her death and walked around the music venue tampering with the crime scene, there'd be bloody footprints left in various places throughout the venue. So that's why I think there's no way she faked her death. There's no way Ibuki committed suicide. You know, we already finished talking about that a while ago. We did. Huh? Really? That's annoying. I guess I should just awkwardly laugh about it then. <laughs> Beautiful. Are you freaking kidding me? There's no limit to how useless you can be. No, wait a minute. If Ibuki had blood on her feet, there'd be footprints all over the place if she kept walking around. That's strange. That's very strange. This is strange? What's strange? Her stutter is getting worse. It's getting worse by the minute. I see. It's not something we finished talking about. Those footprints. There's still an important clue left that we completely overlooked. And I am going to bring this episode to a close right here. What is this important clue? Find out next time. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.